guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting and common childhood infection, and that is the whooping cough, which is also commonly known as pertussis. So let's get started. So what is pertussis? So the whooping cough, which is also commonly known as pertussis, is a serious respiratory tract infection, which is caused by a type of bacteria called Bordetella pertussis. The infection causes violent and uncontrollable coughing that can make it very difficult to breathe. The disease mainly affects babies, which are younger than six months old, who aren't yet protected by immunizations, and kids aged 11 to 18, whose immunity has started to fade. So from this definition of pertussis, we get that it's a common childhood bacterial infection, which is caused by the specific type of bacteria called Bordetella pertussis. So this is actually what these bacteria look like. And these bacteria are important because they actually affect and completely infiltrate the respiratory tracts of these patients. So in doing so, they actually cause this violent and uncontrollable cough, and it actually makes this sort of whooping sound, which is why the disease is called whooping cough. So in the majority of cases, it's usually children six months and younger who are affected, and then kids aged between 11 to 18. So now that we know what the basics of pertussis is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So pertussis is a very contagious disease and it's only found in humans. The disease spreads very easily from person to person. The infection is caused by a type of bacteria, as we mentioned earlier, called Bordetella pertussis. So when an infected person coughs or sneezes, tiny germ-laden droplets are sprayed into the air and are breathed into the lungs of anyone who happens to be nearby. Many babies who get pertussis are infected by older siblings, parents or caregivers who may not have known they even have the disease. So as we can see in this little video that's playing at the bottom of my screen, the disease actually spreads very easily by these droplets which are sprayed into the atmosphere when someone who has the disease coughs or sneezes them up. So once these bacteria are actually coughed up, they are inhaled by another person and they very quickly start to invade and infect the respiratory tract of the new person. So the disease is commonly known to affect mostly children, but adults can be infected, but they may not even know they have the disease because the symptoms in the adult patients seem to be much less severe than when the infection occurs in the younger ones. So now that we know how one can contract this disease, let's take a close look at some signs and symptoms of the disease. So early symptoms of this disease mimic the common cold and include a runny nose, cough and a fever. But within two weeks, a dry and persistent cough may develop that eventually makes breathing very difficult. So children often make a whoop sound when they try to take a breath after coughing spells, though this classic sound is less common in infants. So this type of severe cough can also cause vomiting, blue or purple skin around the mouth, dehydration, a low-grade fever, and of course, breathing difficulties. So I want to just quickly take a closer look at this picture, which tells us more about the disease progression in the whooping cough infection. So we have stage one, which lasts from zero to two weeks and is called the catarrhal stage. And symptoms here will include a runny nose, the low-grade fever, mild and occasional coughing. And at this point, the patients are highly contagious. Then we have stage two, which is the paroxysmal stage. And this lasts from week two to eight, so about six weeks. And symptoms here include fits of numerous rapid coughs followed by a whoop sound, vomiting and exhaustion after coughing fits, and that's why it's called parasisms. And finally, stage three, which lasts from week eight to 12, so roughly four weeks. And here, the patients actually become susceptible to other respiratory tract infections. And this stage is called the convalescent stage. And here we can have recovery, but it is gradual and the coughing does begin to lessen, but the random fits of coughing may actually return. So before we move on to the next slide, I just want to play you guys a little snippet, which is actually recorded in a young child who has the whooping cough. So let's play this now. <coughs> So you'll notice the fits of the numerous and rapid coughs and the hearing of that whoop sound which is recorded sporadically during the entire recording. 
So this is actually what the typical sound of the whooping cough sounds like. So now let's talk about the vaccination in pertussis. So the whooping cough infection can be prevented with the pertussis vaccine. And this is part of the DTAP vaccine or the DTAP vaccine. And this vaccine prevents us from diphtheria, tetanus and acellular pertussis. So the DTAP vaccine is a vaccine which consists of a series of five injections, which is typically given to children at these ages, two months, four months, six months, 15 to 18 months, and then again between four to six years. So something very important to note is that this vaccine actually protects more than 80% of vaccinated infants from developing this disease. So that is why the vaccination comes highly recommended because as we can see, the disease has quite catastrophic effects on the affected patients. So that's why it's always better to prevent something than to rather treat or cure it. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of pertussis. A physician's overall impression is most effective in initially making the diagnosis, especially in patients with a history of vomiting after coughing or in which a whoop is recorded. The diagnosis of pertussis may be confirmed by isolating the specific bacterial organism, Bordetella pertussis, from the sputum samples of an infected individual. So these sputum samples are best obtained using a cotton swab that is placed through the nose into the rear portion of the throat, which is the posterior pharynx. And another way in which the disease can be diagnosed is during the paroxysmal phase of pertussis and this is actually associated with very high levels of white cells in the blood, especially the lymphocytes. So we have a lymphocytosis. So usually we can use the history of the patient and the characteristic whooping sound to diagnose the disease. But the disease has to be confirmed by isolating the Bordetella bacteria from sputum samples which are obtained through cotton swabs and then explored microscopically. So another thing that can be indicative of pertussis is lymphocytosis or increased levels of lymphocytic white blood cells in the patient's blood and this usually happens during the paroxysmal phase of the disease. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of pertussis. So the treatment of pertussis involves the administration of antibiotic drugs that help to clear the bacteria from the throat of affected individuals and this usually occurs within three to four days. By the fourth day of treatment, the disease is no longer contagious. Erythromycin is the antibiotic drug of choice and is routinely given because it halts the transmission of the disease to others. The combination of trimetoprim sulfamethoxazole is an alternative antibiotic therapy that is given to those who cannot tolerate erythromycin. So the general treatment of pertussis is done with an antibiotic drug called erythromycin, but in patients who do not tolerate erythromycin, we can use trimetoprim sulfamethoxazole, and this is actually an antibacterial agent or an antibiotic, which can actually help to clear out these bacteria quite quickly and efficiently, and they actually resolve the symptoms pretty rapidly. And by the fourth day of treatment, these patients are actually no longer contagious, which is an absolute win from the treatment perspective. And that brings us to the end of this video on the whooping cough. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.